Hey Killer Bees, it's Paula B from PaulaBeeFitness.com and on tap today I've got a great total body burn that is designed perfectly for women of a certain age. You guys, we are getting low impact cardio, balance work, and total body strength in just under 30 minutes with absolutely no jumping and no transitions to the ground. Now you are going to need a pair of dumbbells for today and I went moderate today because it's a moderate workout for me. You're welcome to set your own challenge though. And if you need a different kind of challenge, make sure that you open up the description box below so that you can get the exact three pair dumbbell set that I got from Amazon so that I'm always ready for whatever the day brings me. You guys, I've got a great warm up and a cool down for us today. So when you're ready for this one, I'm totally ready. Let's go. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and get moving and grooving. Go ahead and put your dumbbells completely out of the way and we're gonna get started with some arm circles and high knees like we do. You guys, if you are new around here, you might not know that that is like we do, but it is. It's like we do. If you are new here, welcome. I totally appreciate you coming and hanging out with us today, having a good sweat and a good time. Make sure you click that subscribe button before your arms get too noodly, because you guys, today we are doing it all. I tell you what, this is, this is one of the most complete workouts I think I've programmed in a while, and I totally, I love doing stuff like that. I mean, I'm, you know me. Maybe you don't know me if you're new again welcome <laughs> but I love I love to focus on one kind of thing like I tend to do you know like an all cardio workout or an all strength workout but sometimes some days I really just want to get it all done in a nice efficient and effective way let's go ahead and do some arm crossers with booty kickers and today is that day now you guys I am treating today as a moderate workout no matter what your goal is if you are losing weight or you are shaping your body. Moderate workouts have their place in every kind of routine. And in fact, make sure that you open up the description box below and download my five page information resource that explains how to make any workout work for your goal. The fact is, even if you are really working on shaping your body after you've, you know, maybe you've already lost weight or you are happy with your weight, the fact is you don't have to push hard every single day. Moderate workouts, especially at our age, are just the way to go to achieve your results. Let's go ahead and do some welcome to my homes. Sweeping that arm wide open, opening up that chest, opening up your abs, opening up everything. Getting ready for it today. Here's what it looks like. I've got the handy dandy gym boss set for intervals of 20 seconds of work and 10 seconds of rest. And I've got four little circuits, not, I mean, not super little. They've each got a handful of exercises. But what we're gonna do is get through each circuit twice in a row. So it's kind of a repeating, no repeat workout today. And we're getting started with cardio, which is why I'm not spending too much time on this warm up because we're gonna continue warming up with our cardio section. And in fact, let's go ahead and get going with that. We're gonna get started with middle skips, which is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It's a skipping motion where we don't do any jumping at all because there's no jumping today. So let's go ahead and get going with that. So we're bringing up one hand and one knee in a nice skipping motion for 20 seconds. Now when it beeps, we're gonna get 10 seconds of rest. And the rest, honestly, I mean, you'll need it later. <laughs> but right now, this cardio section truly is a bit of an extended warm up. And because we're taking the day at a nice moderate pace, you can just kind of do some tappers in between. Coming up next, we're gonna do punch down tap outs. Again, exactly what it sounds like. We're punching down while tapping that same foot out to the side. So it's a lower motion, really keeping those legs really extended, really extending your arm. It's a big motion at a moderate pace, you guys. I have to tell you, I'm full of energy today. I'm feeling real good about this. This is gonna be one of those days, 10 seconds of rest, that I tell you about all the time. Doing a moderate workout and trying to tone yourself down down. Coming up next, we're doing letter K's. Both hands up overhead. We're going to reach one hand down while that same leg is kicking out to the side. On one side of your body, it's forming the letter K, and on the other side, it's not. <laughs> but you guys, I think this is actually really good practice for me. Oftentimes, when I come into a moderate workout, I'm, I'm feeling like a moderate day. <laughs> like, like,
like I'm, I'm tired from something, 10 seconds of rest. Today I'm not. Today I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to ramp it up. We're doing ding-dongs next, which means that our hands are swinging low from side to side while we are kicking out <laughs> to that same side. Now I guess your hands aren't really all that low, are they? I know, it's got a nice big swing to it here. But today, today I'm really going to have to think about reining myself in and not going too hard on any one of these exercises. 10 seconds of rest. Coming up next, we're doing forward hinge arm flappers. And I can already feel that I'm going a little bit too fast. Forward hinge arm flappers. Our feet stay stable. Our hands are flapping, just like jumping jacks kind of, but our lower body is doing a forward hinge, aka a deadlift. Your back is super straight. Your core is pulled in tight. Your hands are swinging, but it's really your, up, your booty that is absolutely driving this motion, pushing your hips back, pulling them forward. You guys, that was our whole mini circuit, which means that we're gonna start again with middle skips. This is our second time through, and that means it's our last time through. So those middle skips, one hand and one knee across your body as though you are skipping merrily like a child, even though when I was a child, I could not skip. <laughs> I think, I know I've told this story before. If you heard it before, I apologize. But when I was in kindergarten, we actually got graded on whether or not we could skip. Like that was, that was what we had to do, 10 seconds of rest. And that was the only subject that I failed. Coming up next, we're doing punch down tap outs. And if you've ever wondered, here we go with punch down tap outs. If you've ever wondered why I see myself as a terribly uncoordinated person, yes, that experience from my early childhood shaped how I saw myself for years, years and years. I, I truly felt like I couldn't do stuff until 10 seconds of rest. Coming up next is letter K's. Until sometime in my like late 30s, early 40s when I discovered I was capable of anything I wanted to try. <laughs> Here we go with letter K's. Both hands up, one hand coming out to the side with that same foot kicking out to the side. And actually, I will tell you, I mean, speaking of coordination, there are a couple of exercises today that are require a little bit of coordination, not a ton, but a little bit. And I always want you to know, 10 seconds of rest, that if there's something you can't do, don't want to do, or whatever, coming up next is ding dongs. Do something else. I'm not grading you on this. Here we go with your hands swinging and your legs kicking. I'm never going to send you a failing report card because you can't skip or you can't do whatever exercise we're doing today. My friends, we are always doing our best and having a good time. <laughs> 10 seconds of rest. And then coming up next, we're already at the end of our cardio circuit. We're doing forward hinge arm flappers for the second and final time. And then, because our heart rate is nice and high, here we go with these forward hinge arm flappers. Our next circuit is balance work. <laughs> Now, you guys, I did this on purpose because I wanted to make sure that we were practicing balance when our heart rate is a little bit high, but not like crazy high. And in fact, the rest of the workout is going to be even a little bit lower heart rate than this because we're doing a little bit more strength work. So coming up next, we're going to do overhead to high knees. Now, I'm doing the entire first circuit with my left leg planted on the ground. So overhead to high knees means your hands go overhead and you bring up one high knee down to those hands as they're coming down. So I am balancing on one leg. I am stepping my toe down though, very much so. I'm not trying to balance throughout this entire 20 seconds. But we're doing all of the exercises on one side first. So for me, my left leg is completely planted for the whole first time through. Coming up next, we're doing something I call peekaboo kicks which means that our arms are gonna be doing peekaboos, which means that your elbows are at shoulder height, Whew, hands are just a little bit above your head. You're opening and closing your elbows like peekaboo while that right leg is kicking. Now for me, I'm keeping my knee up high and simply extending the lower part of my leg. Oh, definitely felt the burn on that one. That's why I didn't waste too much time on the first one to just be balancing because I knew there was plenty of it. Coming up next, we're doing a side 
sidekick reach, which is just what it sounds like. We're side kicking while reaching with both of our hands. Now, once again, I am tapping my foot down. In fact, not even tapping. I'm stepping my foot down in between. We're practicing balance in very small doses today. It's a little tiny bit at a time. We're figuring out exactly how far we can go. 10 seconds of rest coming up next. We're doing twisting high knees. So again, only bringing up one high knee and I'm going to be twisting that same way every time. So your hands are just about, oh my gosh, shoulder height and you're bringing up one high knee while twisting into it. It's quite a different thing to do with your balance is to twist into it. Sometimes when we're balancing, we're still looking forward. Twisting your head and your upper body really takes on a whole nother layer. 10 seconds of rest and then coming up next is our last thing. We're doing a flying oblique crunch. So we're gonna come up into a flying fast up, hands up overhead. You're gonna bring up one knee and then both hands go up again and then one elbow comes out to the side. So it's both hands down and then one elbow out to the side. Both hands down to the knee, full extension, and then extend out to the side. It's two crunching motions, but in different ways. Yeah, that was our circuit, <laughs> you guys. <coughs> Coming up next, we're gonna switch all of our balance over to the other leg. We're gonna do overhead to high knees first. Oh my goodness, I always, <laughs> I love the transition to my allegedly stronger leg because <laughs> I'm always like, oh, this is going to feel so much easier. I got the hard part out of the way. And then the stronger leg, it's just as tough to balance. I, I'm working on my balance all the time, my friends. It's always a work in progress. 10 seconds of rest. Coming up next, we're doing those peekaboo kicks. So your knee is gonna come up and stay up. You're extending your lower leg while we're doing those peekaboos. This is a lot going on. I mean, this is what I was talking about with coordination and there's my allegedly stronger leg not being very strong. You're thinking about pulling back your elbows with your middle back, pulling out your lower leg with your quadriceps on top and standing oh, on a soft but strong knee. I know, that was a lot. Coming up next, we're doing the side kick reaches, which means that our hands are just extending out really, really wide in both directions while we do a side kick. I mean, it's basically like a starburst. I mean, we're just coming out huge into this big motion while tipping ourselves over to the side. And you're tipping over just as far as you can recover from without falling into or out of it each time. Excellent job. Okay, you guys. Ha! Ah, coming up next, twisting high knees. So you're gonna bring up the knee of the side that you're not standing on while twisting whew, into it. Oh my gosh, this one is really challenging me today. We've got our abs and obliques working here. We've got that twisting motion. We're thinking about where all of your body parts are in time and space. And I tell you what, this this is what they call a complex exercise, 10 seconds of rest, because we're working a whole bunch of muscle groups. Coming up next is our flying oblique crunches, where we're doing a flying fast up and then an oblique crunch. So here we go, tipping over, hands to your knees, then full extension, and then elbow to your knee, out to the side, full extension. So crunch, and then oblique crunch. Crunch in the middle and oblique crunch. And you guys, this is the last of our balance work. We are almost ready for our strength portion. Woo, doggies, 10 seconds of rest while you pick up those dumbbells. Make sure that you choose a weight that feels as challenging as you want it to feel. We're getting started with press ups, which is just what it sounds like. We're pressing up. You're making sure that your core is pulled in nice and tight. Knees are soft but strong. Hands start at your shoulders and then they press up overhead. Your palms are facing each other at the bottom and then facing out at the top. Now this is strength work, which means that we're moving even a little bit slower, yes, than we did with the balance work. Coming up next, we're gonna be doing letter X's. We're forming the top of the letter X and then the bottom of the letter X with straight extended arms. So your hands start at your middle, core is pulled in super duper tight. Top of the X and then bottom of the X. And the way that we're doing this is by pulling, squeezing from the middle of your back. Those big, strong muscles in your back doing all the work here. Elbows are straight 
but not locked. 10 seconds of rest. Whew. Coming up next, we're doing bent over rows. Core is pulled in tight, back is straight. Push your hips back just a little bit. As your arms hang down, we're gonna squeeze those hands all the way up to your armpits and then release. So squeeze up and release. Trying really hard not to shrug your shoulders, but again, pulling from those big muscles in your back. Awesome, awesome job staying super strong. Now I know with these short intervals, you're thinking, Paula, we're doing such little work. Trust me, it's just perfect. We're gonna do delt raises next. Core is soft but strong, core is strong. Knees are soft but strong. Palms face your body. We're pulling those hands all the way up to your chin if you can. Now here's the thing. Again, we're not shrugging. We are squeezing from the top of your shoulders to bring your elbows up, up, up. Past your ears if you can. You're doing your best. However far you can pull them up is how far you can pull them up and release. 10 seconds of rest. Coming up next, it's the toughest one. We're doing high curls. You're gonna have your arms out straight at shoulder height with palms facing up and we're gonna curl in. Elbows are still shoulder height and then release. So curling and releasing. Your core is pulled in so tight. Your knees are soft but strong. Oh my goodness, your shoulders and arms are doing a bunch of work right now. That is the magic of the 20 second intervals, you guys. We're getting plenty of work. That was our circuit. Coming up next, we're gonna start again with those press ups. So core is pulled in nice and tight. We're pressing up and bringing them back down. This strength work is slower than the cardio work, and yet, I don't know if you've noticed it, just as sweaty. That's the point about finding the exact right amount of weight to work with. The fact is, 10 seconds of rest, you could probably lift heavier, but in order to keep this moderate today, we wanted to find the exact moderate amount. Coming up next is letter X's. Hands start at your middle, we form the top of the letter X and the bottom of the letter X. Making sure that you're not just swinging your arms and asking your lower back to do this work, but squeezing from the middle of your back Ooh, to ask the proper muscles to do their work. Excellent job, 10 seconds of rest. Coming up next is those bent over rows. Core is pulled in super duper tight, hips pushed back, palms facing each other and your arms are relaxed and then pull those hands right up to your armpits and release, awesome job. Neck is neutral really thinking about having a strong core, a strong foundation. Your knees are soft but strong. Really thinking about pulling from your back muscles, not your lower back muscles, your mid back muscles. 10 seconds of rest. Coming up next, we're doing those delt raises again. <sighs> Take a nice deep breath. Core is pulled in super duper tight, palms facing your body. Squeeze from your shoulders to bring those elbows up as high as you can while the dumbbells stay right in front of your body and get hopefully just about as high as your chin if you can. Really thinking about not shrugging your shoulders. Controlling this motion is how we get the most benefit. 10 seconds of rest. The fact is you could move faster but you could also hurt yourself when you move faster. Coming up next is high curls. Arms spread out to the sides at shoulder height. We curl it in. Oh, and we release it out. This, thank goodness, is the last exercise in our strength circuit for our upper body strength. Whew, and coming up next, Oh my gosh, we're gonna do lower body and abs. Now I will tell you that the first couple of exercises you could keep your dumbbells in your hands. I'm not going to, but you could. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and go body weight only for these. We're starting with squats. Feet about hip width apart. You're going to push your hips back and then squat down and stand it on up. Now here's the thing. If you don't like squats or lunges, you are welcome to do the balance circuit again. Right now, you could be doing overhead to high knees rather than squatting. I totally understand that not everybody likes to squat. I happen to love squatting, but not everybody does. You're getting the exact same work when you do balance work. Coming up next, we're doing reverse lunge to a high knee. Again, I'm gonna stand on my left leg to do all of the first round. So we're coming back into a reverse lunge and then bringing up that high knee. Don't feel like doing this. Do some peekaboo kicks instead. Still getting plenty of work on your lower body, those legs, that booty, but you don't have to lunge to get the same kind of work. 
When it beeps again, whoo, gonna get 10 seconds of rest and thank goodness for it. Coming up next, we're doing a turn in lunge with a sumo squat in between, or you can do the side kick reach. What that means is feet nice and wide. We're gonna turn in and then sumo squat and then turn in and lunge on the other side. So your feet are staying in the same place, but one foot is pivoting for that turn in, and then the sumo, whoo, and then the other foot pivots and turns in for the other. 10 seconds of rest. Okay, moving on to abs, but it's still part of this same circuit. We're doing twisting Ys. Feet are super close together. Your upper body forms a big letter Y, reaching the opposite part of your hand down towards, oh my gosh, behind your knee if you can. Twisting that letter Y and really working your abs and obliques. Oh my gosh. Letting your hips push back while we hinge forward and really thinking about that twist and squeeze. Tw 10 seconds of rest. Coming up next, we're doing cross body squatted crunches. Feet a little bit wider than hip width apart. Hands on your shoulders. We're coming down into a half squat. Opposite elbow towards your opposite knee. Oh, this is the grunting portion of our circuit today. Oh my gosh, you guys. Staying in that half squat the entire time. Whew, and twisting and crunching across your body. I know. Ah, that got tough. <laughs> I told you. I think I told you. 10 seconds of rest. That was the whole circuit. Coming up next, we're getting started with those squats again. You can do overhead to high knees if you would prefer. Plenty of work to be done, no matter how you modify or moderate this workout. It's why I was enthusiastic with the cardio and slowed it on down, because I knew all of this was coming. You guys, the thing is, even with a moderate workout, there's always, always work. 10 seconds of rest. Coming up next is the reverse lunge into a high knee. I'm gonna be standing on my right leg for this whole interval. You can be doing peekaboo kicks if you would prefer. Reverse lunge up to a high knee. Reverse lunge up to a high knee. You notice that this is still balance work too. The fact is balance work works your legs, works your quads, your glutes, your hamstrings. You don't have to squat or lunge to get all of this work. 10 seconds of rest. I'm going to do turn in lunges with that sumo squat. <laughs> You're probably going to be doing the side kick reach. <laughs> Trust me, I know. <laughs> the turn in lunge with the sumo squat is arguably, I mean, it's, it's one of the hardest things we've done to today. And that's, that's kind of what happens with my workouts, you guys. We start off and we're feeling all good. And then all of a sudden there's like one or two exercises that are just tough. 10 seconds of rest. Whew. And speaking of tough, here comes those twisting Y's. Our last two exercises, we're working on those abs and obliques again. Feet close together, hands nice and wide, reaching down across your body. Whew, reaching behind, behind whatever you can get to on your opposite leg. If you can just reach your glutes or your hamstrings, you might be flexible enough to come all the way down to your ankle. I mean, honestly, it's always up to you. And this one is much more about the twist than about how low you can go. 10 seconds of rest. Okay, coming up next. It's those cross-body squatted crunches again. Feet a little bit wider than hip width apart. We're coming down in a little squat. Hands on your shoulders. Reach across your body to crunch. Whew, and then up in between. Across your body on the other side. Whew, and up in between. There is no resting position. It's all squatting all the time. And that's why whew, this is the last exercise in our last circuit. And when it beeps again, oh, we are done but we're not finished, <laughs> you guys. I've got one more final little cardio for us. We're gonna do tree jacks. What that means is we're gonna get into a tree pose while our hands are doing jumping jacks. Now our foot is gonna go up and down. I picked my left leg to stand on, my right foot to be doing the tree pose. When it beeps, we're gonna hold that tree pose for the 10 seconds. There's no rest here. That's why it's the finisher. It's the toughest thing we're doing, but we are tougher. And when we get through one interval on each side, here we go, holding that tree pose. When it beeps again, I'm gonna switch legs. <sighs> Golly. 
Excellent. So feet down, coming up into a tree and tapping down, up into a tree and tapping down. When it beeps again, we're holding this tree pose on this side and it's the last thing we're gonna do. There's nothing, there's nothing more finisher than a finisher, my friends. This has been the exact right amount of tough today. No matter if you took that as a push day or a moderate day, this got sweaty and that was it. I'm gonna tap it out here for a second. Oh golly, we're gonna do a cool down now. We're gonna do a little tappers here and we're gonna do some arm circles. Oh gosh, to really stretch out ha, those shoulders, that chest and your back. Oh my goodness, what a great job you did today. I don't care how much you were modifying, moderating, moda whatevering. That got sweaty and as promised, that got it all done. Now here's the thing. I mean, today was moderate for me and I'm going to be done because moderate is enough as I tell you all the time. If today was a push day for you and you do have a little bit more in the tank, here on screen at the very end, the last 20 seconds of the video, I am gonna have something else for you, another like kitchen sink kind of workout like this that has a little bit of everything for you. If you are done, and again, I wholeheartedly encourage that, I do have a little bit more stretching for you. Let's go ahead and do some arm openers and arm crossers. I do love an extended cool down to really feel cooled down. I mean, this one got sweaty today, my friends. So help yourself to either one of those at the top of the screen at the end of the video. At the bottom of the screen, there's gonna be the letter P. That's an invitation to go over to Patreon, where a monthly pledge from you helps me make free workouts for all of us. And thank you so much if you choose to support that way. On the other side of the screen is a picture of me, and that's actually a subscribe button. Make sure that you click that and the bell notification so that YouTube lets you know every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much for working out with me today. Make sure that you subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.